So we had to run into Roman, of course, the CEO of Angelbird. I mean, this is like our annual thing now. He's always like, I got something even more amazing for you. So Angelbird is a really premium memory brand. It's unbelievable. I've been using the Steve Express Type B cards, which is what we talked about last year. And we just talked about their new micro SD cards on Rewind a few weeks ago. But now you guys are putting out Steve Express Type A, but not just that. It's one terabyte Steve Express Type A. So if you were a Sony user, You've been, talk, you've been trying to go into SD cards because they're less money, but you're inhibiting the specs you paid for, the higher end specs out of the camera. You guys have put out, I think this might be the biggest on the market capacity wise for CF Express Type A. Definitely, yes. That's, uh, that was our goal. That was, was uh, what the, our customers requested. And uh, yeah, we deliver now. Yeah, but it, so it's a big capacity, CF Express Type A, and it's, it's priced really, really competitively. Can, can we talk about that? Uh, what's today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what, hit the link down below for the price. You're gonna be really shocked in comparison to the rest of the Steve Express Type A options out there. But you're not skimping on anything. I mean, this is still a sustained speed of 650 megabytes, 8K, right? So this is, if you've got an Alpha 1, 30 frames per second, full res 50 megabytes, 50 megapixels, I'm sorry. You can, it can do everything the camera will throw at it and the capacity. So yeah. not just the speed, but we're doing so much data now, you have the ability to just have two cards, two terabytes yeah. in that camera. The thing is, you know, video wise, the camera is so good. So you need the capacity. Yes. And this is what we got from our customers. They said, we need a capacity card, a high capacity card to really use the camera in full, uh, because otherwise we always have to exchange cards. And of course, the second topic was, it has to be price per gigabyte. It has to be uh, in line with the camera, with the system. So we said, okay, let's, uh, let's provide that. And uh, we think uh, that should be, that should be it. Yeah, I mean, you're, you don't want to go like double the price of the camera just to have memory in it, I get it. Yeah. You know, but it's, what's really interesting is, so a lot of memory brands are, are kind of like buying what's out there to put together a memory card. You're telling me you're not. No. You own everything. Yes. So Angelbird is able to do whatever they basically want, which is basically what you're doing, this pirate ship mentality yeah. of, we want to put this out at this price, we're going to go do it. Yes. Roman, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost, I can't wait for next year now. What is he gonna bring me? A rabbit out of a hat? I mean, this is crazy. So check out the links below for the Super Stress Type A, one terabyte from Angel Bird. Roman, what can I Seth, say, man? Seth, I promise, uh, you asked me for something. Every year you want to have something from me. Yeah, I know. I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's this, this for this year, but it's just the first thing. I know, okay. he, and he won't tell me this next thing. So we're gonna have to check back with you guys, but you know we deliver, always. I mean, it's unbelievable. And also the branding's <laughs> cool, can I just say that? Anyway, Roman, thank you so much for your time, man. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, man. Be good. Take care, have a good one. All right, so when we first got here, we swung by the Western Digital booth and they showed us exactly something I was talking about a year ago when we showed you guys the ProBlade system. And I got Hobie here from Condor Blue because they saw what I saw. I'm gonna take all the credit for this, by the way. Yeah. No, but look, we have a GH6 here from Lumix that can do SSD recording out from USB, right? Well, that ProBlade can be right there in the handle. So now yeah. you are talking about Western Digital trying to make another standard happen with this. And I kept on saying, someone's gonna make a grip. Someone's gonna make something that's accessory that goes with the camera, or how about a handle? Yeah. And you guys did it. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's really obvious when you see the shape, right? Like, <laughs> we, we, worked, we worked really hard to make the right type of interface so we could make this work perfectly with our USB-C cables, because we're, we're not really known for these, right? So we figured our right angle would be perfect, and we wanted to make this so it had some kind of protection. So right here we have a, a front NATO rail, so it's a dual function. It's a NATO rail and it's USB-C protection. So super simple, super easy, just like that. And what's great about it you don't is have to worry about knocking it out. Yeah. It's, it's, it's got a sleeve kind of going totally on there. Totally protected. And we also have NATO to NATO monitor mounts that perfectly fit on there, so you don't sacrifice any connectivity or any type of rigging. And a all. shoe. And a cold shoe. Quarter 20. Quarter 20 with locating pin. But this, he just showed me, I didn't even realize this, it has a rail on the bottom, so you can, if you have a front heavy lens. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, they really thought about this one, but I mean, just, I mean, terabytes and terabytes of whatever NVMe you want to put inside these blanks, now recording right to it from the yes, uh, from the USB-C. This is, I mean, it seems like common sense as soon as you saw yeah. the ProBlade, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and we're talking about a year after they, I mean, actually less than a year though, yeah, when really this came out. So yeah. you guys just got right to work on this. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're super glad that uh, Western Digital and, and uh, SanDisk and, uh, wanted to partner with us on this because this is what we do best. We, make, we take really awesome products and we make them super functional and really easy to rig onto your cameras. And so another really, really, really cool feature is this is just attached via a NATO rail, right? Yeah. I think NATO is the future, honestly. So we have both here at the bottom. This whole thing, if you unbolt it, has four airy pins. So you can rotate this 90 degrees, and this can actually sit vertically on the side as well. And all of our cages have NATO rails on every side. So you can do it up like this, you can mount it down, down like this, whatever works best for you. And it even feels better as a side hand yeah, somehow. Did. Somehow, yeah. And so even though this is an entire NATO rail, we didn't want to sacrifice ergonomics. So we machined in finger grooves. So it's nice and comfortable and functional. And the price point is actually pretty nice. So we'll let you check all this stuff out in the description, stuff like that. But I mean, it's just really cool to see a brand be so nimble to just go, that's cool, let's do this and support it. So when Western Digital threw a bunch of dice on the ground and tried to say, we want to create another standard, they really were going, hey, what brands are going to help us do that? And Condor Blue answered it and more and more uh, camera brands are doing SSD recording out by USB-C, so we're seeing that, right? Black Magic, stuff like yeah. that. So this is just getting a head start on building out a full system for that. It's Hobie, yeah. you, br you brought my dream. Like, I, I'm not kidding. Like, you guys saw me call this a year ago. I'm just calling. I'm just saying. I, I love feeling vindicated. You know. You know. Hobie, thank you so much. Dude, absolutely, thank man. You. Thank you so much for having me. Got to check out the lenses, right? And DZO has been super popular. You guys are doing such unique things. And these are your first anamorphics, right? So we're looking at the Pavo anamorphic, the 75 T2.1 and the 28 millimeter T2.1. Yeah. Give me a little uh, spiel on it. Yes. So what you're seeing now is maybe the one of the most compact and uh, it is really the lightest, smooth. Uh, the lightest anamorphic, Super 35 2 time anamorphic uh, in the world. And uh, this anamorphic, like I, like you have seen, I can I can handle it easily on my hand, and uh, with a very minimum, with a very close minimum focus at 154. Oh, nice! And all the and all the mid wide angle mid range has the uh, aperture at uh, t2.1. Okay. Uh, this is uh, we have brought two focal lens here, which is 75 and uh, 28. Uh, they are both in pretty much. The, the same size, the, the same weight, yeah, yeah. and uh, they have a very nice uh, feature when it's uh, image style, when it's wide open, and uh, when you stop down, uh, stop, it will be uh, very, very pleasing to look. Uh, it has a clinical look. Uh, nice and clean yeah, look, right? Clean. And being the same size, it's easy to swap between and not worry about balance points. Yes. Yeah. So you got look in this lens, and you also have the have the possibility to have a very you have that vintage look, and you also have the have the the, the way to have a clinical look. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think you guys have been doing a great job and very. Um, nice value like it's very easy for people to get their hands on your lenses and now you've made anamorphic that look just that much easier for people to use especially running gun with anamorphic yes it's crazy it's, it's crazy yeah <laughs> so no, it's, it's more like almost like a spherical almost spherical lens try it for nano this is crazy this is and it looks cool by the way i like that like the, yeah the, the housing looks really nice and what's the minimum focusing distance on here? Uh, this one has a uh, two feet eight minimum focus. And what's this? This uh, this is one feet four. That's so close, unbelievable. Well, you guys can check out the links down below to get the full specs on these lenses. I had to stop by Dizio. I hear about you guys every day. Believe me, every time someone that is out there filming, they're they're wondering about Dizio. They're always hearing something, and now you guys have the Pavo Anamorphics, which. You, no, seriously, when you put that down, you got you to check this out. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Estera, you already know it, right? I just say it, you know it. I got Josh with me because they've just added even more to what has already been a real staple system out there. And this is the exosystem. And I'm talking about exoskeletal, things that they can add on to build and make an erector set out of this thing. Am I right? That's exactly so you just made right. it even more versatile Did. in any location. That's exactly correct. So a lot of times everybody was coming to us and they were very upset at the fact that our current locking plate, you'd actually have it within the source itself. So what we've decided to do is we've created a back structure so that now we can then have more of your uh, top fluorescent type looks. There's nothing in between. It's nice and clean. 
So this is practical, like in scene. That's exactly So it right. looks like a fixture rather than a tube they clamped up in the middle of like a 60s scene. That is exactly <laughs> correct. Now also, these are titanium pins as they're taking most of the rigidity of the stress. Uh, you have multiple points to be able to attach to, just like you see on this guy here. So now if I need to reach out over something, I can do that without putting any pressure on the polycarbonate. I'm not cracking, putting any white pressure marks. Run and gun fast, get that light in there, film it, get out. That's exactly correct. Now also, we've always gotten requests of, hey, I got multiple tubes, I wanna get them going string down the hallway. How do I lock them together? Initially, that was not possible. Now we have the ability to thread directly from unit to unit and utilize the hook up top to just be able to aircraft cable, whatever you dream up of, and be able to go from there. Also, when you're looking at a structure like this, being nice and clean, in the very back, you've got smaller holes, so if I needed to, I could bring this into the architectment realm of things. I could have them mounted on walls, put the direction that I need them, and they could live there forever due to the fact that you can hardline these in. And the same barrel plug that you, that you guys know as far as being data and power on the same cable, that then utilizes them to just go ahead and do their thing in a lobby, whatever it might be, hotels, you name it. And even more like foot and joiners, right? So we're looking at things where you can actually just mount it vertical, it'll stay stable. That's correct. Putting two in to make an L bracket or three to okay. make a corner. Or an entire cube and let your guys stand inside of it, but, all of that. But this is the one I was actually really psyched on. This is probably one of the best grids I've seen. And this is really designed completely inside. There's a tech, there's an actual like pattern on the inside here that's rigid and grooved so that you know how light works, angle in, angle out. Whatever angle it comes in, it, came, it, it reflects back out at. Well, this is constantly keeping the light inside this, inside this grid. So let's slap this that's on right. something. And this backing here is actually just for redundancy. And you're gonna actually hear that in just a moment. When I go ahead and lock this in place, it is connecting to it. It will not fall off. This is just to make peace of mind and ease. And from there, I can even angle degree because I have the exoskeleton structure here. Now I've taken my light output and you can see I mean, how look, soft look at is. this. And you can see on my hand just how dialed that is, right? I mean, you're talking about a uh, tube that like spill everywhere, dialed. And this is all very lightweight, easy to carry around, keep in a truck, grip up easily. Carbon fiber. Yeah, that's the other thing, it's carbon fiber. I should have mentioned that. Strongest steel, lightest plastic. Cool, man, this is nuts. So if you're already in the Astera system, take a look at EXO, and you guys are always innovating, but this I actually, this is really cool. So you're looking at a fixture that can go right in scene and be in scene and not be look, and not be seen. Ah, huh? you like exactly that? Exactly right, ah. I like it. Cool, man, well, I think you should call this EXO Terra. <laughs> so that, you know, because, you know, all right. Well, anyway, Josh, thanks for joining me. Thank you very much. All right, so we're walking through the show and we swung by GVM, which stands for Great Video Maker. They've been around for a while, but they've got a whole new series of lights here with this Ferrari red going on here. And I just want to walk through with you. We got a 650B, yep. 500B, 400B, 300B, and 200B. B meaning by color, but look at this range of a selection you have from a full, and let me tell you, price point's pretty good. I'll put the links down below so you can check them for yourself. But for, for the 650, we're talking about an all aluminum body, mm -hmm. right? By color, 650 yes, watt. Color. Yeah, 650 watts. So walk me through it a little bit. There's also, you know, controllers here. Yeah. And also we can do the app control. App control. Yes. All right. It, uh, you can do the color temperature, you know, sources, special effects there. Yeah, the yeah. effects and everything like that. Where? More than 10 like, special effects there. But this is like, I mean, you're talking about 650, you're talking about 650, it's a lot. And this is Bowen's mount? Yes. I mean, that's a lot of light, right? That's true. What, what I actually found kind of interesting about it was, is that on this model, we've got a frosted lens on it, but it actually is removable. So if you want it to have more of a direct light instead of a diffused light coming from the light source itself, you have that ability after all these threads, by the way, hang on a second. Once it's off, once it's off, you can see is there stable? <laughs> there's the actual unit there, right? But there actually is a difference when you put this on. So it's kind of cool. If you want to actually customize the look of the light with the modifier, you have this ability. I kind of like it more with the diffuser on it. It'll break up that light, but you have that option is what I'm trying to say. So mm -hmm. if you guys want, check out the links down below for GVM, great video maker. Their new line of, I think these are called Pro SD. Yes. Pro SD, yeah. So there you guys go. Another option for you out there in the LED space for mono lights. A lot of panels over there and a bunch of tubes as well. So there's a full line here. It's not just one company with a brand with just one model out there. Yes, and also we have the metal lights there. 
Oh, we have Matt Light. Yeah, that's my idea. We have Matt Light, Fernando. All kinds of people have Matt Light. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's the power of LEDs. You have so many form factors that, that you too. can do out there. So, that's too. very cool. And thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.